My guess is that if you're watching this video, you have recently made a significant next step in your faith journey. Whether it was baptism, giving your heart to the Lord for the very first time, or maybe rededicating your life to Christ. Well, our hope with this Change Life course is that over four sessions, you'll build a firm foundation as you begin to let live a life in Him. So we're going to talk about three things today. Number one, embracing your new identity in Christ. Number two, understanding grace-based salvation. And number three, reflecting God's love in your changed life. So let's start with the first one, embracing your new identity in Christ. Becoming a Christian isn't just about a one-time decision. It's about a lifelong transformation. You see, your identity has changed. You are a new creation in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Now, you may not look differently physically, but your heart is different. You are now a disciple of Christ. And the difference between the old you and the new you is that in your heart, you now have a desire to live a life that brings glory and honor to God. Now, feelings don't dictate your new identity. It is a fact of faith. When you trusted your life to Christ, instantly and forever, you have received this new identity. If you're a citizen of a country like the United States, like you probably are, if you get a speeding ticket, you didn't lose your citizenship. Same thing. If you mess up and as you're moving forward, you don't lose your new identity. You are now forever and always a disciple of Christ. Second thing here is God is at work in you. He's going to continue to transform you into his image. I love Philippians 1, 6. It says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it, carry it until completion, until the day of Christ Jesus. There's this word in the Bible used to describe this process called sanctification, which means to be made holy. And it's a lifelong process, not a one-time moment. I heard a preacher say, was he surveyed his own spiritual journey, and he said, I'm not who I want to be, but I'm not who I used to be either. If you stay close to the heart of God, I promise you, God will transform you over time. Our faith is much more like a crock pot, a slow cook, than it is a microwave. And the third thing is this, embrace this new identity because it impacts every relationship in your life. Being a disciple of Jesus is not just a Sunday thing, it's an all life thing. Your new identity in Christ is now at the center of your life. I want you to think of your new life as a wheel with spokes and in the center is a hub. And now at the center of this hub is this new identity and everything else is impacted. Every spoke, your marriage, your friendships, your career, your hobbies, all of them stem from this new identity in Christ. So the second big idea of session one is understanding grace-based salvation. See, salvation is not earned through good works, but it's received by grace. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9 says it beautifully. It says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. So I want to talk about a few key points to helping us understand grace-based salvation. And key point number one is this. You cannot earn God's approval. It is a gift of grace, not based on your works. See, God saves you not because of your own righteousness, but out of his great love for you. Two terms that I want you to understand is this, mercy and grace. Mercy is not getting what you deserve, and grace is getting what you don't deserve. Now, we deserve death because of our sin, but because of Christ, we have been shown mercy and grace. Now, key point number two is this, your behavior changes as a response to grace, not as a way to earn our salvation. You see, our new identity as a Christian should give us a desire to glorify God with our life. But we obey God not because it earns His love or helps us stay in His favor, but we do it because He loved us, and so therefore we obey Him. Now, point number three is we need to appreciate the magnitude of God's grace. It is a gift that transforms your life and continues to transform your life. To illustrate the magnitude of God's grace, I want to share a simple story. I want you to imagine a teenage girl who just got her driver's license. She comes from a good home. They're involved in church. She gets good grades. And one day she's driving home from practice and she receives a text message and she knows she should not check her text while she's driving. That's a no-no, but against her better judgment, 
She looks down, checks her text, and just in that split second that she takes her eyes off the road, she veers into the shoulder and she strikes a child that has been playing on the side of the road. It's devastating. The child is killed. She can't believe it. The cops come, they cuff her, they take her off to jail because what she did, no doubt about it, was against the law, vehicular manslaughter. And she comes to that moment where she has to stand before the judge and the judge pronounces a sentence on her. She receives 20 years in prison for vehicular manslaughter. She's devastated. Her family is devastated. But then this judge does something so unprecedented, so extraordinary, an incredible act of mercy and grace. He comes off of his judgment seat and he goes down to this young lady and he looks to the guards who are ready to usher off to prison and he says, cuff me, take me. And he looks at the girl and he says, you can go free. And the judge serves the 20 year sentence. Just unbelievable. It's hard to fathom someone doing something like that. But that is the magnitude of God's grace and mercy for us. You see, our sin deserved death, but instead of us getting it, guess what? Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And he gave us this amazing gift of grace, which is reconciliation back to God and eternal life in him. You see, our salvation is based on God's grace through and through. And I want you to understand the magnitude of God's grace. Well, the third big idea that I want to talk to you about in session one of our Change Life course is this. We're called to reflect God's love in our change life. First John chapter one, verses five through seven says this, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. You see, a changed life reflects God's love and transforms how we live. A couple key points I want to share with you about this. Number one, we're called to reflect his character through your actions, through our actions. While we know that we cannot earn God's approval, but the way we live our life demonstrates our desire to glorify God. In response to God's love for us, we should reflect God's character in our life. You know, people say my oldest daughter, Perry, looks like Shannon, and she does. They look alike, they talk alike, they even act alike. She resembles Shannon. And we are to do this as Christians. In fact, the word Christian means little Christ. People should see Jesus in us as we live our lives. The second key point is this. Prioritize a relationship with God and demonstrate his love to others. Jesus was questioned one time about what the greatest commandment in all the law was. And he said this in Matthew 22, verses 36 through 40. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. See, we demonstrate our faith in Christ by loving God and extending that love to those around us. Third point, engage in making disciples. Share this transformative message of Christ with other people. Y'all, Good news is meant to be shared. When my daughter Perry and Paisley were born, we called everyone to tell them the good news. We put a post on social media. I text family and friends. I could not wait to share the incredible news that our beautiful daughter came into the world. And as Christians, we get to share this good news. We get to share our good news, our faith with other people. Now, how do we do it? We don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to have a seminary degree. You don't have to know the Bible inside and out. What we do is we just tell others about how Christ has impacted our life. Now, in conclusion, as we wrap up session one, I have challenge and an application for you. I want you to reflect on your identity in Christ. How does it impact your daily life? I want you to commit to living out the changed life. Prioritize loving God and others. And I want you to respond to God's grace by sharing his love with those around you. Here's a final encouragement that I want to leave you with. Trust in God's transformative power and embrace the journey of becoming more like Christ.